Hello, miserable humans. Well, I have finally gone to season 5, so that means I actually have gotten further in my recast than the awesome Unicorn of War, which also means that I'm not going to be able to use any of his casting choices from here on out. Maybe he'll see this video and start stealing my casting choices. Yeah, that's not likely to happen, but definitely go check out his content because it's amazing. Anyway, season 5, a season about under the sea and people. you'd think I'd love it since I'm a mer man, but I don't. Like everyone, I hate the season, and I personally find it very insulting to mer people, especially since they call merman tritons instead of mermen. What the Tartarus were they thinking? You hairless apes already cause enough damage in your world, do you have to be insulting to us as well? When I find the air-sucking monkey that came up with that idea, I'm gonna... Anyway, a few things I should say before I begin. First of all, I will not be including Luna in this video because of the fact that I already covered her in Radius in my recast of Season 1. Secondly, I will be including Politea in this video due to the fact that she's the only new character introduced in that awful Mystery of the Abyss movie. Lastly, I know that Stella turns into a kid in this season, but I'm saving that for when I do my recast of Season 7. Now with that out of the way, let's begin. Starting with this season's pathetic excuse for a villain, Tritanus. One of the reasons that he's an absolute joke is because of his English voice actor. Don't get me wrong, Adam Wiley is a great actor, but he was so miscast. In his regular merman form, because I refuse to promote an insult to my species by calling him a triton, he comes off as a whiny teenager. I am your son too, but you picked my brother! For this I will destroy all of you. And for his monstrous form, he doesn't sound intimidating at all and makes me feel embarrassed not only for my species, but also for the forces of evil. I will make my father regret that he chose my brother over me! So I plan on giving him two voice actors to help make him less of a laughingstock. One for his regular merman form and one for his monstrous form. For merman Tritanus, I went with Eric Stewart, who you will recognize as Brock and James from the 4Kids dub of Pokemon and as Kaiba from the 4Kids dub of Yu-Gi-Oh. He'd be able to sound young enough to where he's age appropriate for the character, while also having a deeper voice that makes him seem more threatening and sinister rather than just some angsty brat. His Kaiba voice would just be perfect for the character. When I get hold of all three of these unstoppable Egyptian god monsters, not even Yuki will be able to defeat me. Once again, I'll be the number one duelist in the world. <laughs> As for monstrous Tritanus, I went with Tony Todd, who is amazing at voicing characters that are intimidating, menacing, and monstrous. Yes, his performance would likely be a bit dark for Wingslip, but that would help with making him come off as a serious threat rather than the low-tier villain he is. I have dreamed of my return to that wretched planet where I too was once betrayed by the crimes I called my brothers. Now we move on to the residence of Andros. Again, starting with Tritanus' twin brother, Nereus. While I did love Will Friedel's performance, I already have him cast as the voice of Riven. I ultimately decided to go with David Gallagher, who a lot of people will recognize as Simon Camden from Seventh Heaven, but Animation and Kingdom Hearts fans will recognize him as the voice of Riku. I feel like he should have a deep voice like his twin brother, but not sound exactly like him, since twins do tend to have similar sounding voices. I feel like David would be able to portray his heroic and noble side very well. During the Mark of Mastery exam, we learned that he can transcend space and time. He's a portal, and we can use that to trap him. Next, we have King Neptune, and for him, I went with John Rhys Davies, who animation fans will recognize for his roles as Macbeth from Gargoyles, Kasim from Aladdin and the King of Thieves, and Ben Ray from SpongeBob SquarePants. I feel like he would absolutely nail the character's powerful and demanding presence flawlessly. He'd also be able to portray his hot-headed nature while also being able to display his sincerity and warmth during the character's softer moments. I knew exactly what I wanted for my family. The best. I couldn't give up and go back empty-handed. But 
weeks turned into months and months turned into years. As for Roy, Layla slash Aisha's new downgrade of a love interest that they gave her after they had the nerve to kill off Naboo, which I will never forgive. Anyway, I went with Zeno Robinson, aka Hunter the Golden Guard from The Owl House. Roy is a very bland, generic, and boring character, but I feel like Zeno could help bring some charm and personality to an otherwise dull character. I mean, Zeno has proven to be able to give performances full of personality with his performance as Hunter. And like I've said, representation in voice acting is important, even though it's not clear exactly what Roy's race is. I figure that using any voice actor that is a man of color would work, plus his voice really suits the design. You were right before. I'm a powerless witch. A lot of my ancestors were. I never thought I'd have a future in a world like this. But then, Bellows found me and gave me a staff with artificial magic said the Titan had big plans for me. Now we move on to the Guardians of Cyrenix, starting with the treacherous Palatea. I had a very hard time casting for her because I wanted someone who sounded ethereal and otherworldly, but also sinister and a little demonic. However, thanks to I Love Foxy 2021 from the Union of War Discord server, I finally managed to choose someone. Also, hi Foxy. Hi everyone in the Union of War Discord server, even though it's not likely any of you are watching this. Anyway, my choice is Laura Post, who is best known for being the voice of Queen Nahalenia in the biz dub of Sailor Moon. She would just perfectly capture all the qualities that Politeia should have. I didn't need friends or loved ones. I was the only friend I needed. I was the only one I loved. For all eternity, the one person I knew I could trust, in whom I could confide my feelings, was me. As for Omnia, I went with veteran Boing Club voice actress Erica Schroeder. I feel like the performance she gave as Daphne in the 4Kids dub would be perfectly flawless for the character. It's so ethereal and mysterious. It's time for you to complete your journey. Are you ready? Then come. Come beneath the water. Leave the world behind and dive into yourself. As for the other Guardians of Cyrenix, this will be quick because they will all be keeping their voices from the Nick dub. Same goes for any other characters that were introduced in Season 5 that I don't mention in this video. Now we move on to the Selkies, who really don't have much in the way of individual traits or personality, so I won't talk in great detail about them, but I will be giving them voice actors to help them stand out more from each other and make them a little more memorable. Starting with Layla slash Aisha's bonded silky Lemmy, I went with Melody using her tiki voice from Miraculous Ladybug. You are the chosen one, Marinette. It will all work out. Trust me. For Phila, the Selkie of Earth, this will be quick because she will be keeping her Nick voice. Remy Dames, who does a great job as the character. Selkies! Tritanus has entered the oceans of Earth! For Stella's bonded Selkie, Elyris, I went with another Wingsla veteran, Rachel Lillis, using something similar to her Jigglypuff voice from Pokemon. For Muse's bonded Selkie, Sona, I went with Jessie Flower, who you will recognize for her performance as Toph Beifong from Avatar The Last Airbender. Sona is a tough character, but still very small and adorable, so I feel like Jessie would fit her perfectly. I For Techna's bonded Selkie, Lithia, I went with Candy Milo, and I think she should do something similar to her Dexter voice from Dexter's Laboratory, except a bit more feminine and less like a little boy. Since I have all the characters from Zenith as British, it makes sense for her to have a British accent, which Candy can do as shown with Dexter, as well as portray a character that is logical and practical. I have no time for her foolishness today. For Nyssa, the Selkie of Magics, I went with voice acting legend Kat Susie. I feel like something similar to her Lil DeVille voice from Rugrats would be perfect for the character. I'm throwing my support firmly behind my bullheaded brother. For Flora's bonded Selkie, Daisy Ray, I went with another voice acting legend, Tara Strong, with her Bubbles voice from the Powerpuff Girls. Oh. And for Bloom's bonded silky Serena, she will be keeping her Nick voice, Laura Bailey, who does a great job as the character. I must follow him. I must stop him. 
Now we move on to characters that don't fit into any categories. Starting with the Princess of Linthea, Crystal. I decided to give her an Easter egg voice by having her be voiced by Alejandra Reynoso, who was the voice of Flora in the Nick Dub. I feel like her voice would be better suited to Crystal than it was for Flora. We As for Mitzi's sweet little sister Macy, she will be keeping her Nick voice, Ariel Winter, who animation fans will recognize as Princess Sophia from Sophia the First. No, that's not true. I believe that one day this plant will be a beautiful flower. As for the ancestral spirit of nature that grants the wings a nature's key, I had to go with Candy Milo with her Madame Foster voice from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I feel like that voice would show her as a wise and ancient being while also making her more memorable. Plus, the voice just really suits the design. But don't you worry. It may seem bad now, but you will feel fine about it soon. It's only a matter of time before the truth makes itself clear. Lastly, we have come to the royal leaders and one servant that come to Sparks to discuss how to deal with the threat of Tritanus, but are absolute <laughs> about it, and Arendor being the biggest idiot of all. Anyway, starting with Crystal's mother, Queen Rachel, I had to go with Maria Canals Fodera. Most people recognize her as the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place, but animation fans will recognize her for her roles as Hawkgirl from Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, Paulina from Danny Phantom, and Sunset Boulevardes from the Proud Family and its sequel series, Louder and Prouder. While Rachel is white, I still wanted to make sure she was voiced by a Hispanic or Latina woman because of all the other characters from Linfea are clearly coded as such. And there are white, Hispanic, and Latina women. Besides, we all would love to see Maria as a queen. Whatever's happening on that island of yours must be pretty bad for you to resort to this. Next up, we have Galatea's father and the King of Melody. He doesn't really have that many lines, but I still wanted to make sure I cast someone who was Asian. I ended up going with Keanu Young, who in animation is known for voicing the grandpa from American Dragon Jake Long, Kaz from High Hi Puppyami Yumi, and Zhang Zhang from Avatar The Last Airbender. Before learning firebending, you must learn water and earth. As for Cryos, the King of Zenith, I went with Tim Curry, who is always amazing in everything he's in and has never given a bad performance in his life. I mean, what else do I need to say other than Tim Curry voicing a king? You are no ordinary man, so I will give you no ordinary punishment. And finally, we have Cryo's servant. He doesn't really have that many lines, so I just went with Keith Ferguson. Since you're the only contestant that hasn't been disqualified. And there you have it. That was my recast for Season 5 of Wings Club. Next comes the infamous Season 6. So what did you guys think? Did you agree with any of my choices? What are your casting choices? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on my social media accounts by clicking on the links in the description. I'm the Wicked Merman from Under the Sea.